Welcome to the Cloud Adoption Framework Secure Methodology. My name is Mark Simos. I'm a lead cybersecurity architect at Microsoft. Sean? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Sean Anderson, I'm one of the executive security advisors here at Microsoft. Uh, thank you for your time today. So we're going to cover a quick overview of the secure methodology in CAF, um, starting with sort of what leads, what led to it and where um, the security industry is today. So what we see today is markets are transforming. Um, this is because of disruptive uh, organizations, uh, disruptive companies like Uber and Amazon that are using digital technology to change how business is done, how, um, how consumers and customers and partners and suppliers interact with companies and uh, government agencies. And so there's been a change in the markets and how people interact with organizations, whether they're for-profit companies or um, government agencies or nonprofits. People have come to expect something different from the organizations they work with. And so all these organizations are having to change and adapt to this world. And so the thing that we see is that the organizations, as they go to meet those customers and citizens and clients where they are, they have to use those same mobile and cloud technology platforms. And so we're seeing this uh, technology transformation that's going on that is um, transforming how organizations work. Now, the attackers are very quick on the draw. Not only are they continuing to attack organizations, you know, cybersecurity attackers, be it nation states, criminal gangs, hacktivists, etc. Um, they're jumping on the bandwagon quickly, and they're not just continuing to target organizations and find new profit models, which is sort of an existing trend. But as organizations go to the cloud and they're deploying these new platforms, the attackers are taking full advantage of the organization's lack of knowledge to try and find an opening to attack these, especially when the technology departments or the security departments say no to you know, business initiatives, and then the business goes ahead anyway without the security or the technology department on board. Um, so that's uh, a dynamic that we're seeing quite a bit. And this is really what's driving the security transformation to not only keep up with the attackers and their innovations, but also to keep up with the technology platforms and the changing business models and what's valuable to the organization um, as they operate. Any, any thoughts there, Sean? Yeah, and the cloud adoption framework is just that it's a framework and we have taken this so that you can take these new dynamics that's happening across the market and business and especially with the attacker landscape and we want you to understand that this is a every industry and customer it's slightly different but this is a journey and we want you to understand that it's a framework it's a, it's to give you a starting point to give you a guidance on the lessons that we've learned and what microsoft has learned from as well as the numerous customers that we've been working with over the years as this transformation has continued to evolve yeah and our goal here is to share as many lessons learned and bright spots as we can in in the most consumable way that you can take action on to think about your program set the right goals uh, think about the right tooling and technology and processes uh, to be successful as you transform security. So the imperative here is to recognize, you know, at the business level, at the technology leadership level, within the security leadership and the security and technology departments, that everybody is transforming. For someone to have a three-year plan that's fully detailed out, that world no longer exists. You're lucky if you know what you're doing exactly in the next three months because of how fast consumer preferences in the market is changing, how fast the technology is changing with the cloud, and how fast the attackers are evolving. Um, at the time of this recording, ransomware is on the rise and probably will continue to, to do so, ransomware and extortion attacks. So the, the imperative here is for everyone to work together because everyone is trying to figure out their part of the puzzle and the market itself is dynamic, the attackers are dynamic, and so it's very important for all the teams to work together. Now, we don't we, we see it a lot of organizations, and, and Sean, I'd, I'd love to get some of your experience here. We see a lot of instances where IT and security and the business aren't working closely together, and they're, um, they're having disagreements about, oh no, we have to do it this way, oh, we have to do it this way. And there's more energy spent on trying to resolve internal conflict than there is dealing with the external realities. And so that tends to take organizations focus away from what they need to be working on uh, because they're focused on that internal conflict. Yeah, absolutely. I had a conversation with a, a CISO just last week and they were 
trying to understand this whole transformation thing and and getting the right players at the table and and I and I went back to the old adage that hey culture eats strategy every day of the week so we've put this in a format and you see transformation across all three areas that this is really designed to help you with guidance and guidelines to help you plan, build, and run, and then further break that down across your org and who has governance, who's responsible for the prevention, and then who's responsible for response. Because just because you aren't part of the CISO organization, the security or IT, doesn't mean you don't have a responsibility for this digital transformation process and project. There's security is a thread. It goes through every area of the organization. So when I work with uh, CIOs and work with directors and security, I tell them you need to make sure you have the right players at the table. Uh, and this gives you that framework, as we keep telling you, that can help you identify what personas, what people need to be in the room, what their roles might be, and how you might want to consider adopting some of these, these ideologies to help you have a successful implementation and roadmap. And this integration needs to be happening at the top, but also throughout the organization so that uh, individual folks within business operations, technical operations and security operations feel empowered to talk to each other, work together, and then um, as well as within middle management architecture and senior leadership. So really has to be a, a collaborative effort throughout the organization, which of course takes culture. So taking a zoom into security now, Ultimately, security is shifting to this continuous improvement mode, um, but at its very basic, security itself can be quite simple. You have a set of assets that are valuable to the business and presumably to many attackers as well. Um, the attackers can monetize it by stealing those and using them or selling them, or they can monetize it by uh, preventing you from having access and then extorting you for money to get back access to your legitimate resources, which is how ransomware attacks work. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's, it's very much asset centric from a business definition perspective. Now, these have to be translated when you say it's a business asset. It's you know our ability to operate in a market or or it's this particular um, you know thing of value to the business that has to translate down to files and servers and applications um, and services. Um, so there's it has to be translated as a business asset to a technical asset. But at the end of the day, the business asset is what matters. So. In order to do business, you've got to access those daily. You know, people have to use these things. They have to use the files and get to the servers and the applications and communicate with each other. And then those assets themselves have to progress and they have to change to meet the market needs. So the application has to have new features that meet the market needs, et cetera. And so these assets themselves are always changing with the needs of the business innovation. Now, keeping those access, those assets secure, the first stage in that is access control. Um, this is where zero trust principles first appear. Now, zero trust is a set of principles that apply to all parts of security, but they are most important in the access control space because we used to keep everything on a corporate network. We used to say, if it's on the network, it's secure, we're gonna protect that network and it's a safe space. But that assumption no longer works because people are working everywhere. They're working on their devices and on cloud services. And so you need to establish access control in that world that doesn't rely on having a traditional approach of a network firewall and, and pretty much defending that one perimeter. You've got to protect things where they are. And so access control is that first step in zero trust. Anything to add, Sean? Yeah, it goes back to the adage of it's, it's all about the data. And data now has the ability to leak or move wherever it can go based on what the user wants to do with it. So you've got to put controls in place to be able to protect that data regardless of its location. And we also wanted to utilize this framework for you to be able to, knowing that you have to focus on zero trust, notice that knowing that you have to focus on assets, let's not chase the issues and chase the incidents, but let's have better, uh, let's reduce vulnerabilities. Let's have better control over the environment. Let's have uh, better visibility across the telemetry that's happening. And you can do that through a good framework. Absolutely. So the next stage is to make sure that as these assets are being developed and changed you know, through the development or the DevOps or DevSecOps processes, you wanna make sure that as you're creating these new assets, these new technical assets, they're meeting the current standards because you don't wanna ship something that doesn't meet the need, um, essentially creating a new asset that's instantly a, a legacy or unsupportable or unsecurable. That's not a healthy way to go because you're just creating more brownfield, more problem space to deal with later. And so we have a section in the, the cloud adoption framework dedicated to innovation security and the DevSecOps process. 
as well as, of course, the access control that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, and this is coming up more and more in conversation. Uh, I've uh, you, you can go ahead and click the next because mm -hmm. it's a good tie in that innovation security piece and DevSecOps. That's usually development and security in the past may not have had any focus or anything to do with development. And now they're right in the middle of it. And so this goes back to being able to manage risk across that environment, making sure that you're educating all the players and really ha understanding how the business and working with the business is going to help you to build the right solutions. And that all goes back to the beginning where what are the personas, who's responsible for what, and bringing them to the table because you, you're you going to be doing more and more DevSecOps. You're going to have a bigger uh, footprint of what you have to monitor and take care of because now we have IoT involved and you have a bigger network and you have more resources there or assets that you're responsible for. And that ties into the next phase of security ops, which Mark, you'll cover. Yep. And the last point on that DevSecOps space, because these are brand new assets and you have to think about access control and monitoring all these other elements to it, that tends to be a very intense microcosm of everyone having to work together as you build it. And so that, as opposed to simply retrofitting and trying to fix something on the existing environment, that tends to be where everyone really has to work together and act as one team. And so that's where it's most, most prominent that that comes in place. Um, security operations, the attackers do what the attackers do. They're constantly looking for a way to get in and make money off of you, whether it's taking your stuff and selling it, whether it's selling access back to you because they've locked it up through encryption and other technologies, um, or whether they're threatening to release it, something you don't want released out on the internet. Um, and in some cases, we actually see threatening of an organization's customers as well for uh, trying to get money. So there, um, you've always got to keep an eye out for the attackers and so security operations, monitoring those assets and rapidly responding to the incidents and removing the ac attacker access as fast as they can. And then keeping those business operations up is really the, the North Star there. So that's that's where that security discipline is focused. Now we mentioned that you need to move to a dynamic uh, posture within security to be constantly and continuously changing and adapting and improving. And this is done through governance and architecture disciplines. Um, and so architecture is really kind of the cool part of governance, um, less about spreadsheets and reporting, a little bit more about diagrams and writing the page that everyone should be on, the, you know, on the, on the same page. Um, and so governance is really where all that happens. And that's what's driving the continuous improvement. Architecture is no longer create a Visio file and then hand it over and update it once every two or three years. Architecture is now a discipline that engages across different teams. They're looking for hotspots. They're looking for trends. They're looking for things they need to head off. They're looking for um, issues that have been around for a long time that are gonna probably become a problem soon. Um, they're, they're, they're helping prioritize and bridge between that business and, uh, and technology environments and helping make it real on both sides. So they're a huge part of that translation and very dynamic in this new world. The rule book, the policies and standards are also dynamic as new cloud services come out, as new, um, as new applications are put out there to engage with users and employees and change things. The rule books for how do you do this net new thing need to be updated in real time. And of course, you need to keep an eye on it with posture management to, uh, to monitor. Sean? And, and a big difference between where we used to work and what we, it's very manual. And we went out and we looked at all the guidelines. We worked with NIST and the open group and, and CIS and, and governance now has a manual, but also an automated component to it. And when you, especially when you implement something like zero trust, if I have to have a person sit behind the console and look to see whether I'm logging in from three different locations, that's, that's just not gonna work. You have to trust the machine learning, you have to trust the AI. So it's important, and the reason we've, we've worked so hard on this cloud adoption framework for you is to take that governance discussion, take these three areas along with this uh, plan, build, run, and really sit down and build out your architecture and your roadmap so that you do it right from the get-go. I work with a lot of organizations who just kind of threw it out there, started working in cloud, not really understanding the nuances and the differences, and now they're they're suffering because they had to go back to the drawing board and retweak, rework, and in some cases rebuild, which costs a lot of money. And we want to have resilient organizations and have some cost savings along the way so that we can make uh, do the business of business, not the business of IT. Absolutely, and and regardless of where you're at, if you need to go back and reset, you know it's better to do it earlier. 
if you're building from the first time and you've got that advantage and you're doing it right the first time, even better. Um, but we designed the cloud adoption framework, um, specifically the secure methodology and actually all the rest of them too, to really be adaptable to that situation to help you wherever you are in your life cycle. So in closing, we just want to really stress that the cloud adoption framework is a journey. Uh, when you look at all of the security capabilities that are out there, there's hundreds of vendors coming at you from all different angles. There's a lot of embedded security across your environment now. And you may want to look at this as where do I start? That's why we've developed a framework for you. And don't eat the elephant all at once. Look at the different swim lanes, come up with a plan, get the right players in the room, and then have those discussions and put it down on paper, uh, virtually if you need to, on where you need to go and how you want to get there. Uh, we appreciate your time today and uh, good luck in your journey. Thank you.